been a little while since I did a vintage video uh, and I've gotten a lot of really good stuff in the mail. So I thought that the timing would be right to, uh, to catch you all up on some of the purchases I've been making and some of the cards I've been learning about. Um, start with some of the let's say the, the more common or, or less exciting, we'll kind of work our way up. Um, a 1926 WG Grace from Gallagher's, nice card. 1907 Monty Noble, this is an Australian issue. 1909, uh, 1910, Vice Regal Fry. You'll see the, the blue border with the fish. Uh, there's also a red border version and there are two different backs. There's Capstan and Vice Regal. So this is a Capstan Wolf Rhodes and a Monty Noble. So two Nobles in here. Uh, you can see a little bit of paper loss here. Um, these cards are very condition sensitive. A lot of these Australian issues in particular, um, and really the, the 1901 to 1911, let's say, um, Wills. So Capstan was Wills. Um, these are very condition sensitive, um, so just kind of have to deal with that. Uh, speaking of the first uh, decade of the 1900s, this is a Ranji New Series 1 Guinea Gold. I believe this is a 1903. Uh, a Bradman that I didn't have. Uh, not in the top shape, but a 1933 Turf. And uh, a rare 1905 Victor Trumper from uh, Snyder's and Abraham. So those are really cool. Um, and uh, I'll kind of work my way over, um, talk about this set a little bit. I, I've looked at these before. I think I'm going to do a whole video on this set because they're so cool. Um, two cards that are that are uh, you know harder to find are going to be the number 51 through 59 uh, in the Capstan Vice Regal set. So this uh, these subjects, and there's only you know nine of these guys, only appear in this version of the cards. So there's six different uh, kind of types, and Barnes is one that only occurs in two of the types. So you know probably the best bowler of all time, at least in the top five for sure. And uh, this is an early issue for him. And uh, again, much rarer than a lot of the other cards because you know it, it only occurs in the uh, the two versions that say a series of fifty nine at the top. Wooly, this Wooly is important to me um, because this was the one I was missing for my rainbow. So I've got, now got all six variations of the Wills. Um, this is the 1911 again. And uh, this is the series of uh, Capstan. It doesn't say a series of 59, just says a series of. And then uh, a very, very rare um, version of the CB Fry. This is the Havelock. So the Havelock and the BAT are by far the, the most rare um, and this is the Havelock, which is in pretty decent shape. These are usually just absolutely trashed. Uh, it's got a really nice back, barely any coloring, you know, pretty clean. Uh, so that was really cool to get that fry, rare fry. Uh, speaking of rare fries, this is one that I hadn't, uh, hadn't even seen before. And I think this is a 19, I think it's like a 1910 uh, R&J Hill. I'm probably getting that year wrong. I probably should have researched that a little bit more before I talked about this. Okay, 1912. So this was, um, that was my initial thought actually. Um, so this is a 1912 R&J Hill, uh, really scarce card. Um, hadn't seen this one before, was happy to pick that up. Uh, another one, extremely scarce, is this 1901 uh, Wills. So you can see definitely not mint, uh, but you know, clean image with some paper loss on the side, some, some miscoloration, but um, a really, really, really rare card. Uh, very hard to find. You know, this probably would have been a $500 to $1,000 card if it was in mint condition and I didn't pay nearly that much. So happy to grab that. And then uh, maybe a more well-known uh, card of, of Fry. This is the 19... 01 wills um but this is the more commonly seen one this is the the uk um and you can see the backs are pretty similar and these are both 1901 but again the more commonly seen one and then the very 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 rare one um so also from the same set 
uh, I picked up the Ranji. And, you know, thank you, Stephen Fleming, for another really cool deal. Uh, Stephen's got an amazing collection, and, you know, he's got really nice copies of these, I'm sure. And he sells me his spares a lot of the time, which are not nearly as nice, but I just love the different um, subjects. So this one's actually a lot cleaner, except for the writing on the back, which obviously isn't ideal, but um, a really, really cool card. And then the other really rare Ranji, this one is 1899, 18, maybe, maybe not even 1898, depending on the, the source. Um, but this is the Ogden's that you can see the tab is taken off the bottom. Uh, but, you know, if this was in mint condition, this would be, you know, a, a huge, huge card, you know, maybe up to $1,000. Um, so again, didn't pay nearly that much, uh, but I'm really happy to have even a, um, a, a trimmed version of this. So the story is apparently you could send the tabs in uh, for, um, you know, trade in basically and get something in return. So people would cut the bottoms off and send those in and they keep the tops. Wish they would have kept the whole thing, but who knows? Maybe if they did, I wouldn't have this right now. So happy to have it. Moving on. Uh, I think this might be, like if I was thinking of the, the card that I think is most undervalued, has the most opportunity for just absolutely exponential massive growth, like the Sobers Rookie uh, 1957, I think is a really good candidate for that. So I was able to pick up two more of these. Um, this one is in, is in pretty nice shape. This one's actually probably in better shape other than these two, um, two stains. So that obviously drops the condition down quite a bit, but the front is really, really, really clean. Um, I actually owned a PSA seven Sobers that I had to, uh, had to sell because <clears throat> I, I needed to free up some funds, but this front is actually cleaner than that seven that I owned. Um, so happy to pick those up. And then this is a card I did not have. This is a 1965 Scanlins, which is an Australian issue. This is a pretty rare card. <clears throat> um, you know, outside of Australia, you won't really find these. And this one is in absolutely brilliant shape on the front. <clears throat> these are usually pretty trashed. And even the back's nice, except, you know, a couple areas of paper loss, which obviously do affect the grade quite a bit. <clears throat> but um, still really happy to have those. Sobers was really young. He was only about 20 when these came out. And it was a few more years before he was a world-dominant force. So really cool to to get those early Sobers cards. All right, now for what I think is the, the grand finale here. I did not have any Taddy cards. Um, Taddy, this is a very well-known um, cigarette card from the early 1900s. There are soccer subjects that are, you know, worth thousands and thousands of dollars. On the cricket side, there were really two cards I wanted. This is the first one. So Frank Woolley, who obviously I have talked a lot about, and earlier I, I showed the 1911. Um, this 1911 is his earliest card, except for this Taddy's. So uh, I still consider the 1911 to be, you know, pretty close to a rookie card because these tatties are hard to come by. And, um, you know, this tatties right here is his earliest card by three years. And Woolley was a really, really meaningful player. He was the best all rounder for England and probably the best all rounder, uh, period for the first, you know, 50 years of big cricket. Um, Sobers was obviously, um, you know, head and shoulders above him. Sobers was the best batter in the world for well over a decade, and he peaked as a top 10 bowler in the world for, you know, 12 years as well. So, you know, top 10 bowler, top batter in the world, like that's pretty incredible. But Woolley wasn't far behind. Woolley was actually the top three bowler and batter at the peak of his career um, and was the best all-rounder in the world um, well before, you know, that was kind of fashionable with Sobers and um, later Callis. <clears throat> but you could think of him almost like a a uh, Otani, you know, just for a while, just an absolutely dominant batter and absolutely dominant um, bowler. And then the other card I really was searching for for a long time was this Jack Hobbs. Uh, you know, these are considered, you'll see them marked as 1907 or 1908. 
you know, Hobbs' rookie is 1907. So this is either uh, a rookie card or a second year. But either way, a very, very early issue of an extremely sought-after card. Um, and an awesome photo, too. I just think that's a, such a great kind of early photograph uh, of Hobbs and Wooly. So was amazed to pick up this pair here. Um, love these cards. I'm trying to get the full run of all the Hall of Fame rookies. And this was one I thought was going to be really tough to get. So grabbing that this year was uh, was a big goal of mine. So thank you, Stephen, for, uh, for giving me the chance to buy that. All right. Well, that was the big stuff. Um, speaking of Stephen, I wanted to also uh, show this. Um, I showed on an earlier video that I bought the Constantine from him as well as a few of the other cards from this Moros set, an extremely, extremely uh, rare set when the uh, the Deadman book was written on cricket cards in the 1980s, which was like the Bible, cataloged everything. Um, they only knew of one card from this entire set at that point. Um, so Stephen was able to find four of them in his years of searching. I ended up buying those four from him. Uh, so he sent this to me. So these are not the actual cards. That would be quite a quite a nice gift. But even as so, um, you know, Stephen had gotten pictures of the cards that were in the set and uh, and printed them out. And he sent me this note that said the copies enclosed may also assist you in your pursuit of the other Moros, 1930-31 West Indians. Better you have them than me. So I just thought that was an awesome touch. Uh, he also sent me a couple really cool um, cricket cards that were kind of extras that he just sent me, um, you know, kind of a comedic scene here with the, the blind ump. And this is the, you know, the standard uh, Snyder's and Abraham back, which, you know, if you saw earlier, it's a very similar back to uh, the Trumper, which I had shown. And then, uh, <clears throat> Another cool one. This is the Milo cigarette back of Lord Harris. And one last kind of bonus. Um, <coughs> I bought a few of these cards from, from a different fellow on eBay in Australia. And he had these four cards uh, as part of a lot. And the reason I picked these up, I had never heard of these guys before, but this is actually the all black rugby team. From 1928 and the all blacks are the most famous rugby squad in the world uh, and this is actually a cigarette um, company from Cape Town so you know you've got a South African cigarette company printing cards of um, the New Zealand uh, rugby team uh, which somehow made their way to Australia uh, probably decades ago and then I bought and had shipped to America. So these cards have uh, pretty much seen seen some places in their life. So that's it. Um, hope that you enjoyed the, the video. Um, let me know what you think were the best pickups. Are there any cards um, that you think I should be going after? Uh, yeah, thank you. Let me know.